it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today I'm gonna be starting a fun video that I asked if you guys would like to see after I just finished reading 112263 by Stephen King. And so I asked at the end of that video if you guys would like to see a video like this of me watching the recent Stephen King adaptations of the books that I've recently read because in the last few months I have read Pet Cemetery, 112263, and Misery and I haven't watched any of the adaptations of them yet so I thought that this vlog would be like a fun way to like update you guys on my thoughts like while I'm seeing these shows and movies for the first time and so those are the three adaptations that I'm planning on watching for this video and I'm very excited because tonight I'm going to jump right into 112263. This is a limited series on Hulu that came out a couple of years ago I want to say in like 2016 and this TV show stars James Franco and Sarah Gaddon and I'm not a huge James Franco fan but I really really love Sarah Gaddon. She's one of my faves so I'm really looking forward to jumping into this. Hopefully they can do it justice. I'm very concerned about that a lot in this video, but <laughs> we're just gonna jump right into it I just made some freaking cookies and they're so freaking good So I'm gonna eat my cookies and jump into watching 11 63 <laughs> So the first episode of 112263 was really interesting. I really like the way that they're showing like 1960. It looks so much like 1960. Like I think they do a really great job with like the set design and the outfits. Like everything looks really nice. I will say like that first scene between James Franco and Chris Cooper when they're like talking about the time portal thing was like a little bit awkward. Like I don't know. It was kind of like hard to get it invested because it felt kind of like cheesy to me or something but i am liking the vibe of the show so far i'm just i don't know why i'm just not a huge fan of james franco so he's not like my ideal person to be playing this character but other than that i mean i don't have any major issues with it yet and i am pretty invested to see like where this show is gonna go and how true it's gonna stay to the book the major things that i noticed so far that are really different from the book is that he travels back to 1960 whereas in the book he traveled back to like 1958 and i do think it's crazy that he's already met sadie's character in the first episode i mean i know they just kind of had like a meeting in passing but like he already met Sadie's character and like I'm pretty sure in the book he didn't meet her until like 300 or maybe even 400 pages into it so I'm like what? But so far it does seem to be staying pretty true to the book and I'm curious to see where it goes so I'm hoping to get at least maybe four of these episodes done tonight. <laughs> I'm emotional. Okay, so I'm currently on episode three of 11-22-63, and the thing that kind of sucks about watching the adaptation of things so closely after you finished reading it is that you can't help but notice some of the differences from the book, and my immediate reaction is to get mad and hate them, but I understand that some of them like might be necessary. This is like a very minor spoiler for the book and the TV show, but I'm on the third episode and I feel like the major glaring difference so far between the book and this TV show is the fact that Jake has decided to like tell someone in the show that he's from the future and like confide in him and they're kind of like trying to take down JFK now together, which is very strange because like in the book, he kept it very private for like most of the book. It was like a very private thing that he never told anybody about. And I feel like the main difference of why they're doing this in the show is so that he, so that the scenes aren't as boring, I guess, of him like doing all of the research and stuff so that he has like someone else to have dialogue with, you know? But at the same time, like it's kind of strange that he would just like randomly choose to trust this guy you know like i know he didn't really have a choice because the guy was kind of catching on to him anyways but it's still like strange that he would just like confide in, in this stranger that he doesn't really know and like tell him all this shit that could like really put him in jeopardy and i also feel like the timeline of this show is just moving very fast especially in comparison to the book like we're already in 1962 
in the third episode and i feel like that's so crazy because i feel like so much of the book is spent in between the years of like 1958 and 1962 so it's weird to just see us jumping straight to 1962 but i guess it might be more relevant for this show because like i don't know i just feel like there was more like planning and stuff involved in the book Jake and Sadie met like for realsies now and like they're so cute and I'm here for this so I'm excited to continue watching. I think it's a good show so far. I just finished episode four and I will say that episodes three and four were like okay. I feel like they were on the slow side. The episode four just ended on kind of like a cliffhanger so I am interested in watching the next episode and I think I'm gonna watch the next four maybe tomorrow. We shall see. I think tomorrow night I'm going over to my parents' house because they're actually currently watching this show as well. So I told them to watch up to episode four so that we could watch the next ones together because I'm going to be going over there tomorrow for like Easter weekend. So yeah, I'm curious to see where the show is going. So far, I think it's fine. <laughs> I just finished watching the entirety of 112263 and I will say that I really enjoyed this TV series but I will say that I did prefer the book over the TV show which maybe isn't that surprising but I absolutely loved Sarah Gadden in this show like oh my god she was so amazing and so adorable and I just really love her and her acting is just so convincing and I really loved the ending of the show. I feel like they nailed it with like the comparisons to the book. Like it was almost spot on identical to what happened in the book. And I really appreciated that because the ending is very powerful to me in the book and in the show. But I guess my biggest issue with the show was like James Franco kind of. Like I don't know why. I just don't really love James Franco as an actor. Especially in a more serious role. Like I think he's great in like comedic roles. But like... For a very serious moving show like this i just don't feel like he was the right choice for this lead role because for some reason he's just not very convincing to me and especially during the like emotional scenes i just couldn't quite get there with his performances it was just like something was off and i don't know so i guess james franco is like the biggest issue i had with the show and i also wasn't a huge fan of bill's character in the show like i just don't understand why he needed to be there and he was honestly like really frustrating to watch half the time and i feel like he was the biggest difference from the actual story that was happening in the book and it wasn't a difference that i really enjoyed like i feel like the storyline without him in the book is so much stronger and yeah i also wanted to jump into a few different spoilery things for the show and for the book so just fast forward a little bit if you don't want to hear spoilers i find it interesting that i feel like in the book sadie got hurt so much worse than she did in the show because like in the show she just had like barely a cut kind of on the side of her face but in the book the way they described it it was like she had the knife go all the way through her mouth like into her mouth and then like she had like a droop in her eye that was going to be permanent and stuff and i just felt like the stakes were so much higher in the book because it was like her injury was so bad that jake almost wanted to go back in time to start over so he could prevent her from getting injured you know but i don't know i just feel like in the show her injuries like weren't even that bad so the stakes just didn't feel as high for me and the whole thing with um his brother bill like getting put in the mental hospital like that was such a crazy thing that didn't even happen in the book so i was kind of like super entertained by that like i thought that was really interesting and the way he went about it was just like whoa but then i felt really bad because then bill ended up like killing himself because he got so confused i think by what was real and what wasn't and i just don't think that that was very fair to him even though bill was like an asshole like i think oh my god he pissed me off so bad like, he was just becoming friends with Lee Oswald and then, like, flirting it up with his girlfriend. Like, I don't know what the hell he was doing. But, oh my god, his character was so frustrating. And, yeah, anyways, um, 
I really did love the end of the show though. I loved seeing Sadie as an elderly woman and I loved all the like weird dystopian future that they showed. I thought that looked really cool and really strange and weird. And I don't know, I just really loved the ending. I loved seeing them dance together. Like I swear I was crying the entire end of the episode from like when he goes back in time and meets Sadie again. And she's like, hi, I'm Sadie. And he's like, I know. Like, but I will say the book did make me more emotional. So there's that. But I still really enjoyed the show. I would still recommend the show for sure, but I still think the book was better. So yeah, those are my thoughts on 112263. It's been a couple of days since I finished 112263, and I think I'm gonna decide to watch the Pet Cemetery movie next because it's available on Amazon Prime Video. It's available for free and this is gonna be the one from 1989. I don't know, I'm kind of nervous because Pet Cemetery is my favorite Stephen King that I've read this far. So um, I'm just kind of nervous to like see how it goes because like I hope it's really good but like I don't know. Here we go, Pet Cemetery, 1989. It's an hour and 42 minutes. So Ooh. I didn't realize that Stephen King wrote the screenplay for this, so that's pretty awesome. And I also didn't know that it's directed by a woman, so that's also pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna continue watching now. <laughs> Um, so I just finished watching Pet Cemetery, and I am keeping in mind, you know, that this movie was released 30 plus years ago now, but god, that was like really not good. It sucks, you know, because I feel like there are some movies from the past that really just hold up against the test of time, you know, like The Shining and just like so many other classic movies, but this movie does not hold up well like the acting is so bad and just like everything about it was just so cheesy and it felt really old to me which is like unfortunate because like i feel like sometimes like for example the shining is like one of my favorite movies of all time and i kind of like love it for the fact that it feels kind of like old to me but like with this it just felt so outdated god the acting like the kids acting was so bad and it just felt so cheesy and then like the acting of the parents too i will say though the good thing about this adaptation is that it did pretty much stay true to the book like almost everything was true to the book, it was just like the terrible acting. But I think that's mainly because Stephen King did write the screenplay, so like it did feel very true to, to the story. But it just sucks because I really, really didn't like this adaptation and I've heard that the new Pet Sem Cemetery adaptation is also really terrible. So it just makes me mad because like it's my favorite Stephen King book. So it's like, it sucks that they can't do an adaptation of this justice, apparently. It was like nice though watching this because there were some things about the book that I had forgotten about since I read it, because I read it in October last year. So it's been like about six months since I read it. Um, and so it was nice to get like a refresher on some of the details that I forgot about the book. But ugh, other than that, I feel like this movie is a hot mess and it just, it doesn't hold up to today I feel like. I mean I could see how maybe if you watched this in 1989 like it might have been scary and it might have been like decent you know but like watching it today for the first time like it just doesn't hold up which is unfortunate. Hello! So I just finished watching the movie Misery, which was the last Stephen King adaptation that I was watching for this video. I think this is my favorite adaptation out of the three that I just watched for this video because it was so good and I honestly think that this story works better as a movie than it did as a book. The book Misery, I think I gave it like three stars, like it was just an okay book for me, but the movie I gave four stars because like the movie was really good. Kathy Bates? 
gave such a good performance as Annie Wilkes in this movie and she was just so entertaining to watch like she really like stole the screen like she was so freaking funny and I love how her character like doesn't cuss but she gets like really mad so she's just like the like, like the word she uses when she gets angry it's just so funny and I also did like the lead actor in this he's I don't know what his name is but he's like the dad from Elf that's like all I know him from. <laughs> but um, he was also really good in this and uh, I just loved it. I, f I do feel like the story works so much better in a movie format and the pacing was a lot better in the movie as opposed to the book. So I feel like this is one of those rare instances where I actually think the movie is better than the book. And I think if you're interested in the story of Misery at all, I definitely recommend the movie over the book, which is, you know, unique. I watched it with my sister too, and she also really enjoyed Misery, and she also gave it four stars. It's funny too, because the other day I was talking about it with my parents, because I had asked them if they'd ever seen any of these Stephen King adaptations, and they were talking about Misery and how much they really liked it too. I don't know, I feel like out of all the Stephen King adaptations that I've ever seen, I still think The Shining is my number one favorite, which I know is kind of controversial, because I know a lot of Stephen King fans don't really like The Shining, or at least because Stephen King himself doesn't like The Shining because it's so different than the book. The Shining is my favorite, like literally one of my favorite movies of all time. Like it's really, really high up there. So The Shining is like way up, like my number one favorite by far adaptation of Stephen King that I've ever seen. And then probably second is It, like the new one. Like not the one from like the 90s or whatever, but the new one that came out pretty recently with the kids not the second movie the part two but the part one with the kids like i think that's a really solid adaptation but misery's got to be up there like misery was really good so i totally understand the hype with that one and yeah i also do think that um 11 63 was a really good adaptation as well like i definitely think the show had some pacing issues like, I don't know if it needed to be eight episodes long, but I still think it was a really solid adaptation and it definitely made me cry at the end. And uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe I'll have to do this again sometime. I know like the next Stephen King book that I'm planning on reading is Salem's Lot and I don't know if there's a movie adaptation for that one. Like, I'm totally not sure. But I know some other Stephen King that I want to read in the future includes Carrie, which I've never seen any of the movie adaptations for that or read that book either, so that's another adaptation that I could watch in the future. And I'm sure there's more, I just can't think. The Green Mile? I don't know if that one has a movie adaptation either. I'm, I think it does. That is a wrap on this video. So if you've seen any of these three adaptations, then let me know what your thoughts are and also let me know what is your favorite Stephen King adaptation of all time, like whether it's a movie or a TV show or whatever it may be. Please let me know what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye!